I'm gonna talk about Parler. So I'm gonna preface this entire video to say that this is not a political YouTube account. This is not a sort of news account. This is really a developer focused YouTube account. So that's the type of content I normally talk about. I know that I actually have to talk about some other stuff that's not developer focused to actually give context on what I wanna talk about. Parler is a web app. Uh, it's also a mobile app, or I guess it used to be, I should say, um, where it's focused around folks who like minds in the a certain political leaning, uh, the alt-right, um, can get together and, and chat. I understand that this this app probably had other stuff, you know, talking about baked goods and stuff like that, but I think the, the bread and butter was really just uh, pro-conservative, pro-alt-right um, conversations. The point is that some stuff happened in the last week, and it, I want to talk about how we got here and then talk about sort of the technical aspect of it and the hosting provider. So I'm going to walk through AWS and how Paro leveraged that and how they don't leverage anymore uh, and how you should be considering your hosting providers in the context of your app um, in case you are on the edge of <laughs> inciting violence. So a lot of things happened in the last week, uh, really mainly a week ago uh, from the time we were recording this video uh, on January 6th, there was an insurrection on the capital of the U.S., uh, in Washington, D.C. Uh, this was something that was a, a planned protest for stopping the steal. If you weren't paying attention, which I don't fault you at not paying attention, especially if you're not based in the U.S., uh, we had an election in November. The election was allegedly not legitimate based on one side of the, the voting. Um, other folks have sort of just moved on and ignored it, including myself. All that stuff sort of came into a point after the protests, folks walked over to the Capitol, which was not too far away, um, took control of the Capitol, uh, caused chaos. The conversation started looking at towards social media. Social media decided to remove the accounts of the sitting president based on the, the tweets that were, were said and quoted um, that point to sort of the violence that eventually un ensued. So Twitter decided to leave the account Facebook, Pinterest, even YouTube eventually uh, deleted the account as well or suspended the accounts of the sitting president. We get to the point where now everybody's focused on the social media side at this app called Parler um, for roughly a day. Uh, I personally never took paid too much attention about Parler until very recently. I knew of its existence, but it wasn't it didn't provide any value to me. The Google Play Store decided that they were remove Parler from the Play Store. That happened. It happened instantly. The Apple App Store decided they would give them 24 hours, but eventually removed them from the App Store. Uh, on top of that, Parler also was removed from their hosting provider, which is AWS, also known as Amazon, uh, Amazon Web Services. AWS kind of runs everything. It's like one of the most synonymous ways to get your web app, your server, your hosted images up on the cloud. And uh, they made the cloud cool uh, when, when folks didn't think it was cool. Uh, I mention all the time about Instagram and how they leverage S3 and AWS to get to sort of scale the entire photo sharing application business. And so it makes sense that Parler was hosted on AWS because why not? In 2018, when Parler was devised and the first line of code was written, if you go to pick the most common solutions, it's gonna be much easier to hire developers based on do you know AWS? You're hired. Like all those sort of so solutions, they make sense. It's part of the reason why so many other the popular developer tools are popular because it's gonna be much easier to get a job at AWS than building decentralized applications on the blockchain. Like that's just not a common knowledge use case that people have. Maybe it will in the future, but today it's just not common. Figuratively and legitimately, AWS pulled the plug on Parler. So Parler has no home to host their content. They had to basically migrate their stuff over the weekend to somewhere else. Surprise, doing a mass infrastructure migration on a weekend is not, it's not something that's gonna happen, uh, especially for app that's only been around for a couple, a couple years. You're gonna assume the team at Parler is gonna be either uh, not well informed of how to do that, or it's just gonna take a lot of effort. It also does sound like that Parler didn't have a huge team. Uh, also eye-opening, it came out after the fact, 300K per month for AWS, that's uh, that's insane. I, I pay $10 for my AWS bill. I don't have as many users as Parler though, so, you know, fair enough. But what I'm getting at is the, the one thing that I, I wanted to really focus on in this conversation is, at this point, I've, I've mentioned 
all facts. Like you could debate whether these are all facts that I mentioned before, but these are all things that actually happened, uh, whether I add my flavor and context to it. Uh, they happened. Twilio basically, Twilio being the communication platform, text messages, email, uh, I think now video at this point, they have a uh, provider to do authentication. They also do, are the SMS provider as well. Uh, they decided to cut ties with Parler as well. Uh, Parler decided to cut ties with uh, Twilio as well. So it was a mutual, mutual breakup. But what I'm getting at, there's an opportunity there for security research, but also hackers to have access to Parler accounts um, without authentication. Uh, so folks were able to sort of this deep dive into all the context there without needing to really have an account. Uh, this is a lot of the content I've sort of schemed, like sort of skimmed across uh, in screenshots on Twitter and uh, well, mainly Twitter and, and Reddit at this point. But what I do want to point out is that this is alleged, like Tulia has not confirmed that this is actually what happened. Parler has not confirmed that this is what happened, but a lot of speculation has happened. I also want to speculate to one other uh, theory and idea is around the, the idea of archiving data. Now, back in the day, GeoCities was kind of the, the place, it was a place for me to host my, you know, rinky dink websites. It was like where I went after AOL <laughs> wasn't, wasn't as popular anymore. Uh, you build a, a quick website, get it up and running, host it on uh, GeoCities, uh, similar to the vein of like spacejam.com. Uh, shout out to spacejam.com, still alive and kicking. GeoCities got purchased by Yahoo. Uh, Yahoo actually decided years later that they were going to shut down GeoCities and everybody had to move stuff off. This sort of created a sort of arms race to archive all of GeoCities. And folks did that. And we have places like the Look Back Machine and archive.org to look at the previous versions of the internet. Like you can see my MySpace page there. I won't tell you the URL, but you can see it there. Um, but what I'm getting at is that same movement is the movement uh, of folks who wanted to archive Parler uh, now that it was sort of exposed in time of this uh, this limbo period between AWS shutting down, saying move off, no Twilio authentication. Now you have access to all this wonderful data. Um, wonderful is like an asterisk. I'll put an asterisk after wonderful. But you have access to data. You're able to sort of mine it and archive it in, to your heart's content. And that's what, exactly what happened. So now we have all this data uh, folks, uh, public data expose your account data. Uh, I do realize that if you, if I got Parler wrong, if I didn't explain it properly and you have an account, don't comment on this video with your Parler account because that data is now exposed uh, and people will do the one-to-one -one cross reference and then they'll find out your Parler account and see what you wrote. Hopefully it's all positive stuff again. Hopefully talking about baked goods and stuff like that. But what I'm getting at is now this, all this data is exposed. I bring this up because I mentioned 2018 was a year I probably would have built something like Parler. I probably would have made the same decisions at that company that they did. Use Twilio, use AWS. But I think what it really comes down to is like when you start pulling out these backstops of what you think are there for life or for the, the longevity of the project and they're no longer there anymore, you start being exposed pretty egregiously to access to data information. Now we could speculate for weeks on what happened. I'm sure a proper postmortem would come out from AWS or from Parler or from some other providers, uh, which I'm looking forward to actually deep diving. I won't probably deep dive here on this channel, but uh, it's just kind of, it's slightly off brand for what I'm trying to do on this channel. Uh, this channel is really focused around developer stories and advancing your career, as well as getting tips and tricks around automation and stuff like that. So uh, if you like that, definitely hit the subscribe button. Uh, but for the context of this conversation, I just think it really just comes down to, um, making design architecture decisions for your app is something that you probably should get the pen and paper out and really start thinking of these sort of fallbacks and backstops for your content and what you're trying to accomplish. I've had the benefit of having tons of side projects with zero users. So I've never had the problem of folks getting to the point where now I have to figure out if I'm inciting violence or going against terms and conditions to be removed from, from another project. Um, the question that comes up too as well is like if AWS can do this and perhaps I'm not inciting violence, but maybe I'm on the verge, maybe I have a different lifestyle that my lifestyle that I, I choose to live uh, is on the edge of terms and conditions. I, I tongue and cheek, uh, tongue and cheekly uh, mentioned blockchain as a solution. This is not a blockchain video, but I think blockchain is now becoming very popular thanks to Bitcoin's price going up. Uh, this is not the channel for that. And that's why <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this context that I provided. Uh, I mostly 
piece all this together from the stuff I read on the internet. So definitely more than happy if you have links and stuff like that you want to share if you want to re rebut everything I said um, I'm also here that too as well like I'm I'm this kind of fascinated at the the, the process that is happening uh, on the technical side of what's happened um, I'm less interested I, I've moved away on the doom scrolling of what's happened and I'm just moving forward to shipping code and I hope you all can do the same so stay safe and see you in the next one